all I could think of was the book by Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj called I Am That. I think that's what I wrote on the piece of paper and I left the rest blank. And you may think, wow, how spiritually advanced. The truth is that I was actually very afraid. I had so many stories and beliefs about being stuck in a category or being ridiculed by others, and I was really worried about what others thought of me. I don't like to argue, so I say nothing and fume for days. How do I set boundaries without sounding like a jerk? I hate the idea that I might accidentally offend somebody, so sometimes I'd just rather say nothing at all. Welcome to the Language Alchemy Podcast, and thank you for joining me today. This is your host, Alejandra Siroca, a transformative communication teacher and coach. I am devoted to helping multicultural individuals and couples on the path of transformation communicate consciously so that they can transform their lives and relationships. Thank you so much for being here. If this is your first time or if you've been listening for a while, I'm honored you're devoting your time to increasing your awareness about your communication and getting transformative communication tools to bring forth more love, more peace, more compassion, and more equity. In today's episode, as I continue to talk about how to align our communication with our values, I want to talk about the words we use to call ourselves. I want to talk about this because many people who come to work with me, they have a title or a position that they've been given at work, or maybe they have a business, and sometimes they don't feel comfortable with what they call themselves. Perhaps you've had this experience, and perhaps you've heard others say, well, just use those words and fake it till you make it. I'm here to offer you something different. And because I like to teach you and offer you only what I have experienced myself, I will start with sharing about my own process to find and embody what I call myself. And then I will offer you an inquiry to go through your own process, or at least to start your own process, to consider what to call yourself and why. When you are not comfortable with what you call yourself, then it's much harder to embody what you do. Maybe you have a particular position or you have a title that you've been given at work, or maybe you have your own business and you have given yourself a title. And that title doesn't really feel comfortable. So when you call yourself using that title, your voice quivers, or the way you say it doesn't sound believable. Or you say it quickly to get it over with. When that happens, when you're not embodying what you're calling yourself, it's harder for others to trust you or trust your value. But what if you could find some other words to call yourself or your work, and whenever you used those words, you felt embodied, confident, grounded, and joyful? That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? And when you use words to call yourself or to talk about what you do that can feel as cozy as your favorite winter sweater or meditation blanket, others follow you and trust your ideas and your leadership because you sound differently. And to do that, to find the words that feel that cozy and grounded, you need to go through a process of uncovering, understanding, connecting, and owning your values. As we begin, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Finding the words that felt true to call myself was something I struggled with for a long time. So if at the end of this podcast episode, you don't have the words that feel accurate for you, if you don't know what to call yourself, it's totally okay. As I said, it's a process. So let it take the time it needs. Maybe today you're just planting the seed, and that would be plenty.
For many years, I fantasized, dreamed, and longed to be able to share with others about that aspect of language and communication that helps us evolve as human beings, that helps us heal from our traumas and histories, that spiritual aspect of language that helps us connect to something much bigger than ourselves, and that also helps us benefit all beings. So when I went back to grad school to help myself get all these ideas and my longings together and come out with an offering, I thought that just by going to the Transformative Leadership Program at CIIS, the California Institute of Integral Studies, I would come out of grad school with the perfect words that would ring true to what I wanted to call myself. In fact, during the program, our professors did many exercises to help us connect to our identities and then our offerings. I remember one exercise in which my professor gave us a blank piece of paper and a marker. And on that piece of paper, we had to write the words, I am, and then spend a couple of minutes writing whatever words came to mind. Some people wrote their societal and relational roles, like mother, sister, community leader. Other people wrote adjectives that described how they saw themselves, such as friendly, conscious, compassionate, strong, intelligent. Others wrote about the qualities of their deeper being, such as love, light, peace. At the time, all I could think of was the book by Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj, called I Am That. I think that's what I wrote on the piece of paper, and I left the rest blank. And you may think, wow, how spiritually advanced. The truth is that I was actually very afraid. I had so many stories and beliefs about being stuck in a category or being ridiculed by others, and I was really worried about what others thought of me. And you're going to find out why in a moment when I tell you how I decided to call myself a transformative communication teacher and coach. I went through the grad school program, I founded Language Alchemy, and even though I was fulfilling my heart's longings, when people would ask me what I called myself, I had a really hard time answering. When my first clients would ask me what to call me and would say, Alejandra, should I call you my mentor, my healer, my special friend? I would just shrug my shoulders and not answer the question directly. As the years went by and I worked to uncover and dissolve my stories, my fears and beliefs, I found a true sense of connection with my core values. And it was when I became intimate with my values that I was able to find the words that felt true to me to call myself. Education is a core value in my family. My dad used to say that if they left us money or a house, we could lose the money or the house could burn down and we could lose it. But if they left us a legacy of education, he believed that we would always find our way because we would know how to solve the obstacles that life presents. So you may think that the word teacher was a natural word for me to use to call myself. Well, it wasn't. And this is because I grew up in Argentina at a time when teachers were not necessarily nurturing beings. Most of my teachers and professors in Argentina were harsh and unkind. They kept their distance from students. If you asked a question, many of my teachers and professors would make fun of you. If you were confused about something they said because it seemed contradictory, they would use condescending language or even throw a piece of chalk at you and aim at your forehead. And unfortunately, my forehead was an easy target. And it wasn't just because I sat up front because I'm short and I had to wear glasses from a very young age. No, it was because I couldn't help myself but ask questions. And, well, lots of pieces of chalk landed on my forehead. In my 25 years of experience with teachers in Argentina, 
I can only think of three teachers who were kind or with whom I felt supported in my learning. So you can see that I was very reluctant to call myself a teacher. And what I had to do first was to work with my specific painful experiences with teachers before I could feel comfortable calling myself one. But then I read a beautiful spiritual book, a book that you may know about. The book is called The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. And it was this book that helped me connect with the values that were already in my heart. In the book, Khalil Gibran says that teachers are guides who take their students to the house of knowledge, that they show them the door and patiently encourage their students to open the door and go through it. He then added that that house of knowledge doesn't belong to the teacher. It belongs to the student. In this book, Khalil Gibran helped me see that teachers guide students home. When I read that, I felt ignited. When I help my students and my clients transform their communication, I am their guide, their companion. I deeply respect people I support as multicultural adults on the path of transformation. And for me, that means that I don't own knowledge or wisdom. I help them tap into their own. I help them go home. And this is how my students and clients transform their lives and their relationships. Halil Gibran helped me connect to my values of humility, respect, autonomy, connection, and patience. And when I connected to those values, this is when I started to let that word teacher take home in my being. And then, some years later, yes, not days later or months later, some years later, my beloved Matthew and I were having a conversation about this. I think it had been about two or three years since Language Alchemy had been born. And Matthew said to me, it's time you talk your walk. It's time you call yourself a teacher. I want to acknowledge that more often than not, I did walk my walk. But even though I helped others communicate in alignment with their values, I didn't always talk my walk. I hid behind other people's communication methods, and I was truly scared to come out to the world and announce that I was a teacher who guided people to the house of knowledge, who patiently supported them to enter that house, to find their own wisdom, and to come out of that house completely transformed because they were now at home, thanks to their education in conscious communication. So after doing all this inner work, I started calling myself a transformative communication teacher. And I feel very honored and humble when I call myself a teacher. And I also call myself a coach. And that word, coach, took me even more years to accept. I will admit that I was so allergic to that term. And that's because I had this image of a sports coach yelling at kids, pushing them to do things that sometimes put kids in danger. And also because in my work with clients, so many of them were deeply hurt and experienced trauma from the language they heard from their coaches, language that was derogatory dehumanizing, sexist, racist, homophobic, xenophobic, fear-based. So as you can imagine, I didn't want to be associated with those concepts or put myself in that box. And again, I had to do a lot of language alchemy work with this word coach. As a coach, I worked with coaches myself, and I still do. And some of my coaches are loving and gentle, encouraging and humble. 
And it was working with those coaches that helped me start to shift my perspective and befriend the word coach. A coach I worked with suggested that I looked at the definitions and the etymology of the word coach. And that's when I discovered that one of the meanings of coach is a carriage, a kind of vehicle that takes people on a journey. And when I learned about that meaning of coach, that word started to resonate with me. It's true. I am a vehicle that takes people on a transformative journey, an alchemical journey, in which people go from communicating habitually and not knowing why their lives and relationships feel dissatisfying to communicating with awareness and taking the necessary steps to cultivate the lives and relationships their hearts long for. It's a beautiful and deep journey from loneliness, drama, unnecessary pain or conflicts to a greater sense of connection, inner peace, and greater harmony with themselves and others. So calling myself a coach has to do with my values of movement, transformation, growth, and holding others safely through their alchemical journeys just like a reliable vehicle does. So now you know why I call myself teacher and coach. And now I'd like to offer you an inquiry for you to reflect on what you call yourself. If possible, if you're doing something else right now, like washing dishes or folding laundry, stop for a couple of minutes. Connect to your breath. If you're not driving, close your eyes and ask yourself, what do you call yourself? And are the words you use to call yourself something that's been given to you? Or have you given yourself those words? As you hear these words in your mind, how do these words feel in your body? Does your body feel comfortable? Do you feel grounded or maybe expansive or both? And are the words you call yourself in alignment with your values? Do they reflect what matter to you? If the answer is yes, then let those words take residence within your being. Let them be your home of wisdom. And if you feel the opposite, if you feel uncomfortable, fidgety, contracted, what are some stories or fears related to those words you call yourself? that would be useful for you to work with and dissolve. Then make a commitment right now to spend time uncovering and dissolving your fears and stories and understanding, connecting with, and embodying your values. I'd like you to know that I didn't do all this work by myself. I got support from my teachers and mentors. So please get some skillful support to work with this. It took me years because I didn't know where to go for support. But it was worth it. And I know that it will be worth it for you as well. Because remember, when you communicate in alignment with your values, when you say what you call yourself, you will feel grounded, capable, because those words have taken residence within you and others will trust you. And if you'd like my support with this, at this moment, I have a couple of spots available for transformative communication coaching. You can schedule a consultation with me by visiting languagealchemy.com forward slash new client. I will add the link in the show notes. And now let's recap what you've heard in this episode. In this episode, I shared about my journey of connecting to my core values to find the words I could say and embody when I called myself transformative communication teacher and coach. And also, I offered you an inquiry to reflect on why you call yourself what you call yourself, what values are underneath those words. And also know if there are stories or fears that you need to work with and dissolve. And remember, maybe today you don't get an immediate answer. Today, 
you may have just planted a seed, and now you may need to let that seed grow. I would love to know what you call yourself and why. If you're on my mailing list, you have my email, so you can email me directly. And if you aren't, just know that every Wednesday I send an email and share what I'm thinking about or working on in terms of communication and teach you transformative communication tools you can put into practice right away. Also, if you are on my mailing list, you are the first one to know about the upcoming Language Alchemy offerings and when there's a discount, you are the one to get it. If you haven't signed up to my newsletter, Go to my website, languagealchemy.com, and sign up. It's very easy. Thank you so much for listening, and a special thanks to all of you who email me or DM me or Instagram after you listen to a podcast episode. When you communicate with me, you help me keep going. Until next week, and as we say in Argentina, ciao, ciao. Original music by Gary LaPoe. You can find all links in the show notes at languagealchemy.com.